Welcome to another Ask Me Anything call. This call is very special because today we are talking about my time management course for entrepreneurs, Startup in 60. So uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Sage Grayson, and I'm a former book editor turned life coach. And I help ambitious career women edit their habits, routines, and mindsets to balance their happiness at work and home. So as I like to say, I'm a life editor and so are you. So today, I want to answer some of the common questions that I've been receiving about Startup in 60. And if you're on my email subscriber list, then you have gotten lots of emails <laughs> this week about Startup in 60. So Startup in 60 is a little different than some of the other uh, business courses you might have experienced or you might see out there. There's thousands of different business courses. Startup in, Stick in 60 is specifically a time management course. And it's a time management course for ambitious women who want to finally start their own businesses. And maybe that's you, and maybe you've been delaying starting your business for months or years, or maybe it's kind of always been in the back of your head, but you've never actually put in the effort and did it. But here's the thing. It's one thing to want to start a business, and it's a totally different thing to actually implement the steps to start a business. And I think if you actually think about it, you know the basics of how to start an online business. Well, of course, you've got to have a website and you've got to have products and services. You've got to set up your shop and payment processors. You've got to market to the people who can benefit from whatever it is that you're selling. Um, so we kind of know those little ins and outs of starting a business, but we don't do it. So that's why I created Startup in 60, to help you get a handle on your time so that you can actually do all of those wonderful things that lead to you having your own business. And it doesn't matter if you have a struggling business right now, or if you've kind of taken a few steps towards starting a business, it's for anyone, whether all you have in your head is an idea, or whether you're a few years into your business, but it could be going better. I do know <laughs> what that was like. Um, so one thing that's been happening is uh, Startup in 60 is going to have a live session that is starting on Monday. So for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know exactly what a live session is. It's when I do one of my multi-week programs live, where we have live interactive group calls where you can get your questions answered, you can speak directly to me, and it's really great because we're all going through the modules together. So we're kind of all at the same place, we're answering the same questions, we're going through the same worksheets, we're watching the same videos, so it's really helpful to have a bunch of other women who are right there with you at the same step. So that's what a live session is, and the next one starts on Monday. So Startup in 60 is a little bit more than 60 days long, it's nine weeks long, and I've been getting some questions about uh, the program, what's included, who's it for, what kind of results can you expect. So I'm taking uh, today's call here on Facebook Live to answer some of those questions. So if you have any questions about Startup in 60, or your own business or uh, time management advice, anything that you wanna share or ask, be sure to type it into the comment box on your screen and I'll be answering your questions during today's call. If you're watching this recording later, that's totally fine. Go ahead and type your questions in there and I will be coming back and answering your questions all week long. So some of you have already sent in your questions ahead of time, so I'm going to answer those on today's call. But let's get right into it. And maybe one of the, the biggest frustrations that we have is that it feels like there's never enough time for anything, for anything we wanna do. No matter what your goals are, it feels like in this world, there's just not enough time for everything. And I think we kind of feel like there's this hectic energy all the time. Like we should always be out there hustling, 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 trying to get what we want. There's certainly more distractions nowadays. 
uh, more TV channels, more movies. We've got our smartphones, all sorts of apps. Um, there's a lot of things out there vying for our attention. So it's hard to focus in on one thing that we want, but we've got a hundred other things in our face trying to pull us in different directions. So that's also adding to why it feels like there's never enough time. As we get older, we have more responsibilities too. I remember when I was like in elementary school and I was like, wow, I am so busy. I can't believe how busy I am here in like third grade. I thought it was like hugely busy. And then high school was even busier. And then college was even busier after that. So I was like, oh my goodness, like life just keeps getting busier and busier and there's more responsibilities. You have jobs, you might have a spouse, kids or elderly parents. Um, you might have medical issues going on. You have to maintain your household and keep your house nice and tidy. Um, maintaining friendships. Yeah, hobbies. I, mean, I don't know. Do you still have time for hobbies and self-care? I hope you do. Um, if you don't, we're going to help you find time for yourself in Startups in 60. So yeah, we have more responsibilities the older that we get. And I think some of us are still holding on to the idea that, you know, I will start my business when things calm down, when I'm not so busy, <laughs> when, when I don't have all of these things vying for my attention. Here's the thing, and I'm gonna be really honest with you, your life is not going to slow down. There are not going to be fewer distractions in the future. There is not going to be like fewer things trying to get your attention in the future. And that's just how it is. I mean, think back to when you were a kid or when you were uh, a young adult. I bet you were also still thinking, you know, I'll, I'll do what I wanna do when things calm down, when I have more time, and that never happened. Your life will continue to expand. Your life will continue to fill up with wonderful things, with new friendships, with, with new family members, with new hobbies, with new responsibilities. So instead of trying to fight that, or instead of putting your life on hold or putting your business on hold or putting any of your goals on hold until things calm down, wouldn't it be better to learn how to manage your time so that you can actually do the things that you want to do despite everything that's happening in your life, despite how full and wondrous and, and sometimes stressful your life can get? I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I don't want you to put off your goals for years and years. I don't want you to wait for some imagined future that's going to be uh, so much easier because that's just not happening. But we can work right where we're at right now and give you some time back so that you can do the things that are important to you. And if that's starting a business, then my time management course, Startup in 60, is going to be perfect for you. So. Another little truth bomb for you, and I think you understand this, is that you have as much time as everyone else, as everyone else on the planet. <laughs> you have as much time as everyone else. And I say that with love because I think sometimes we think that really successful people, like Oprah, or Taylor Swift, or, or Bill Gates, or whoever success looks like to you, we think that they have so much more time than us. Like, like they have a DeLorean. <laughs> they can go back in time whenever they want. Or they've got a time turner from Harry Potter. They can just go back and do everything that they want to do because they've got endless amounts of time. Or they have a stopwatch where they can just pause time and, and, and do everything that's on their to-do list. And it's just not true. Yes, I am going to fully admit that a lot of those successful people have money to hire staff and assistants uh, or nannies or butlers <laughs> or whoever they're, they're hiring a chauffeur. I, I would hire a chauffeur. I would, I would hire a chauffeur. I would hire a personal chef. Let me know in the comments if you were one of those ultra successful people that you envy, what would you be buying with your money? What would you buy with your money to save time? What would you buy with your money to save time? So I would buy a chauffeur, I would buy a personal chef, um, and both of those things would save me a lot of time. But those successful people, most of them, work their 
buns off, <laughs> work their buns off to be successful. There were many years where they were just hustling and hustling and doing their good work before they had the money to hire all of those assistants. And so we can't just say like, oh, uh, I, I can't be Oprah because I don't have all these assistants um, or I don't have billions of dollars. Oprah didn't always have billions of dollars, but those successful people learned to get more stuff done in the limited time that we all have. We all only have 24 hours a day. I'm looking at some of these comments coming in. Nicole says you get a housekeeper, laundry service, and a personal shopper. Yeah, I'm right there with you. La laundry service, that's a really good idea. Tanya says personal chef, definitely, definitely. Uh, we have a personal chef that comes to my retreats, my Life Editor Weekend retreats, which is really, really nice. It's just nice kind of having someone cook for you so you can be doing your work and then pause for your meal without having to like make your meal from scratch too. So yeah, I want you to keep admiring those successful people, but don't feel resentful about it. Like, oh, they've got all that money. They can do all that. Wah, wah, wah. See them as inspiration because that's what they are. They didn't always have that success. They didn't always have that money. And they used their time wisely so that they could get to that point. And that's what I want you to do too. So you have as much time as everyone else. And it's not about finding more time. It's about making the time. This is what I mean by time management. You've got your 24 hours in a day and I want you to use your minutes wisely. And I, I know some of you are, are, are already gonna be pushing back saying, well, Sage, I do use my time wisely. I, I, I just have so much going on, I don't waste time. Like, of course, I don't, I don't waste any time at all. But if you've ever kept a time log, and there is a free printable time log in the Life Editor Clubhouse, uh, or you can go to sagebrazen.com and click on free stuff and you can get it. If you actually keep a time log and map out everything that you do during a day in like 15 or 30 minute chunks, you will see that there are places where you're wasting time. Maybe on your commute, you're not doing anything productive, you're just kind of zoning out. Or maybe, um, <clears throat> you find yourself scrolling through social media for longer than you think you are. You think you're only scrolling through social media for 10 minutes, but it's actually 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Or maybe you're watching the same reruns on TV over and over and over again. Or you're hitting the snooze alarm over and over in the morning. And I know that's hard because it's really dark outside in the winter. So of course we want to sleep in and we want to get those extra five minutes of sleep. But those are all ways that you're kind of wasting time. And if you really care about starting a business, we've got to make the time. You can't just like hope that an extra hour <laughs> will fall out of the sky because it just won't happen. So let's use our time super wisely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's why it feels like there's never enough time, but there actually is. So if there is enough time, we should all have million dollar businesses, right? Right? <laughs> no, we do have enough time to create our own businesses from scratch, but why don't all of us have successful businesses? I think a lot of this comes down to excuses. And in my Startup in 60 program, we have an entire week that is devoted to excuses and busting your excuses because that's really what it comes down to. It's not necessarily so much of like, creating a project plan, doing your to-do list, and like setting up the website and all that technical stuff. It's really in here. It's really dealing with our minds and getting the right kind of mindset to do the work that we want to do. And it's pushing through those excuses. So I want to hear from you. Any of you, just type into the comment box and let me know what are some of the excuses that have held you back in the past from starting your own business. So what types of things have you told yourself that have stopped you from starting your own business? Just type them in the comment box. I would love to hear them. So whether or not you still think they're true, or maybe you do still think they're true, and, and we can talk about that. What types of ways of thinking have held you back? Maybe your mom said that you should just be content with what you have right now, your little desk job, you should just <laughs> be nice and safe, and that's what you should do. 
Or maybe like your brother tried to start a business and it failed and he lost a lot of money and that was really scary. So your excuse is, well, I don't want to fail like he did. Or maybe your excuse is you think you're just not smart enough to start a business. I would say like a lot of us think we're not smart enough, but once you get into the program and you see like, oh, that's what it is. Like people think like creating a website is this big complicated act and it's really not. Or people think sending emails to people is really complicated and it's not. Especially when you have me and a whole bunch of other life editors right there with you helping you. Nothing is ever as technical or as difficult as you think it's going to be. We just kind of build it up in our minds like, oh, it's, it's too difficult. And we don't even take the first step to look at it and realize like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> so let's see what some of these excuses are. Just type your excuses into the, the comment box. So other work is a distraction, like spending time on work. Other people ask me to do, yes, yes. We use that as an excuse all the time. Like I can't do something for me. I can't uh, start my own business because I've got to take care of everyone else. I've got to be a great employee or I've got to be a great manager. I've got to drive my kids all over town or I've got to make sure I have healthy meals for my family or I've got to walk the dog or whatever it is. We're doing so much for everyone else that we don't have time for ourselves. Yeah, it's kind of making ourselves into a martyr. We're lifting everyone else up, but we're not helping ourselves. And when you really think about it, when you help yourself, you're better able to help everyone else and lift everyone else up with you. Um, Nicole also says, poorly defined business goals, trying to make it be too much at once. Yes, yes. We also talk about this in Startup in 60. Uh, one of the great things about Startup in 60 is that we do things on a smaller, smaller, teeny, tiny, sometimes microscopic little scale. And this is really a different way of thinking compared to the way most of us do things. Uh, we, if we're here, and this is where we are today, and we see our idols, like other business owners, or Oprah, <laughs> or whoever, um, up here, and they're doing something at this level, we see the gap. We, if we focus on the gaps, like if we're here at level one and they're at level 20, it can feel really frustrating. We wanna jump up to that next level. So we'll try to do too much at once. <laughs> we'll try to get a really, really fancy website. We'll try to like hire a bunch of assistants. We'll try to do blogging and video and passive income courses and uh, ebooks and a podcast and coaching services and whatever. We'll try to do a hundred things all at once. Oh, and an online shop and like all of this stuff. And it becomes really frustrated and you, you will burn out if you try to jump from like level one to like level 10. We don't do that in Startup in 60 We Take tiny, tiny little 60 second steps. Um, and I'm really, really serious about that. Um, one little side note, if you haven't watched the training course, uh, Embrace Your Version 1.0 Life, it's in the Life Editor Clubhouse, you gotta go check it out because we talk all about how you can feel grateful for where you're at right now, enjoying your version 1.0 life, and then slowly merging, uh, slowly evolving and moving to version two, version three, version four, rather than trying to jump up to level 10 and getting really, really frustrated. So what we do in Startup in 60, which is where this name comes from, is that it's a 60 day course. And we go from idea, like just an idea in your head for a business, to a fully functioning business in just 60 days. And what I mean by fully functioning business is that you're earning money. Yes. If you follow the steps in Startup in 60 and you implement everything and do the work, the odds are really, really in your favor that you will be earning money within 60 days. Um, and here's what I mean. Like, yes, you could set up a lot of things in there, but if you are not earning money, tough love. <laughs> if you're not earning money, it's not a business. It's just an expensive hobby. And I know this is really hard to hear, especially if some of you have really struggling businesses where you haven't been able to get that traction, where you haven't been able to get those, those passive income sales, where you haven't been able to get that consistent income. 
that can be really frustrating to hear that like, well, what do you mean? I'm doing all this work, but I'm not earning money. So it's not a business. Yeah, it's not a business. I'm going to show you ways that you can stop spinning your wheels and do tasks that directly lead to getting sales. And I'm going to put you in a position that you will be marketing yourself to people who are most likely to buy from you rather than spinning your wheels or throwing stuff out there on social media. <laughs> like you're, you're throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping that it sticks. We're not doing that in startup in 60. So the other way that it gets the name in addition to being 60 days long um, is that every single day for 60 days, you get to choose whether you do a 60 minute task or a 60 second task. So every day there's a different uh, theme or different topic that we're working on. And I'm actually going to go through the weekly content in just a minute. But it, it involves uh, figuring out who your ideal client is, coming up with your why, uh, finding the minutes in your schedule, um, determining your pricing, products, packages, services, uh, creating your website, linking up your email account, all of this stuff. And every day you can choose to do the 60 second task or the 60 minute task. And I am 100% serious about this, that if you go through the entire Startup in 60 program and you only do the 60 second task every single day, because that's all you, the time that you have, you like literally don't have more than a minute every day, you will still have a fully functioning business at the end of 60 days. Because I have seen plenty of women do that. Um, the whole point of Startup in 60 is to get you to ditch your excuses. Like you can't come to me and say like, I can't start a business because I don't have an hour a day to work on my business. Fine, you don't need an hour a day to work on your business. You need one minute, one minute a day to work on your business. Um, and what that does, it really kind of frees you up. You can't overthink things. If you only have one minute to choose a domain for your website, you're not gonna overthink it. You're gonna choose a domain and be dumb, done with it. If you've only got one minute to uh, figure out your why, you're gonna like go right to the heart of how you're feeling, like why do you wanna start a business? Um, if you've got like one minute to uh, choose a headshot, you're not going to try to like pose and take the perfect picture for three days and, and go through hundreds of shots trying to find the best one. No, you're just gonna grab any old picture that you have of yourself, boom, and be done with it. I think a lot of us get caught up in perfectionism and that's one of our excuses. Like if I can't do it perfectly, I don't wanna do it at all. And that will slow us down. And Startup in 60 takes care of all of that. There's really no more excuses with this program. That's why it's a time management program for people who are starting a business, not necessarily a business strategy um, <laughs> course, where of course you're going to be uh, starting your business, but we're going to do it in the quickest way possible so that you can start feeling good and earning money quickly. Um, so that's what I was talking about with all of our excuses. If you have any other excuses that are coming up for you or like, oh, Sage, I, I wanna do this, but blank, or I tried to do this before and blank, whatever. Type it into the comments box and let me know and we can talk about some of those excuses that are coming up for you and how we can work through them and kind of shift your mindset. Okay, so I want to talk for a little bit about procrastination. Yeah, because let's, let's say that you do have um, some time in your schedule. Oh, here, I'm just looking at the comments coming in. Do, do, do. Yes, yeah, hard to prioritize which modes to start first. I totally get that. So a lot of times we have this, this procrastination that's going on. It's like, I know I need to publish my website or I know I need to put that on Facebook or I know I need to write my blog post or I know I need to do X, Y, and Z, but we don't do it. And there's a lot of these procrastination traps which we tackle in Startup in 60. Um, and I just, once you start recognizing like, oh, I'm procrastinating again, you'll, be able to, to shift yourself back into that 60 second mode <laughs> and, and keep making progress. So one of the things that I noticed, like a huge procrastination trap is doing research. Yeah, <laughs> you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. 
whatever it is your goal is, whether it's starting a business or losing weight or uh, cleaning your house or getting a new job or saving money, whatever it is, you want to understand what you're going to undertake <laughs> by doing some research first. And that might mean buying programs. That might mean uh, buying other people's courses, buying books about the subject, or downloading a whole bunch of worksheets, or reading 100 articles about the topic, or asking every single one of your friends and family members who has tried to do whatever it is before, and getting so much research and so much information that it's overwhelming. You are like drowning in research. It's kind of like if you can imagine like a firefighter hose where they open up the hose and the water just shoots out everywhere, like all over the fire. That's kind of what it's like when you're doing research. You're getting too much, too much information, but you're not actually implementing anything. So you're using it as a procrastination tactic. You'll just keep gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering like, I can't get started yet. I have to like read that entire book or I can't start my business yet. I have to go through that whole course or I can't start my website yet because I have to read all this technical stuff. No, 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 no. I want you to stop researching. And this is what Startup in 60 does. If you only have 60 seconds to move forward, you don't have time to read 10 articles. You don't have time to look at 20 different shades of blue for your website. You don't have time to, to choose between 30 different kinds of fonts. You don't have time to choose between 10 different payment processors. You've got to make a decision right then and there. And if you do your work and you get your, your 60 second task done, what that does, it gives you this little jolt of confidence because you start to train yourself to trust your gut, to trust your first instinct. Here's the thing, most of us, our first instinct is correct. Like whatever it is, that's that uh, thing that pops up first in your head, in your mind, your, your gut, that is like, bing, <laughs> let's do this one. Um, that is normally the correct thing. So whether it's like a feeling you have about someone or whether it's uh, the next book that you should read or what you should make for, for her lunch or whatever it is, that first instinct, I really want you to trust yourself. And the more you do it, the more you'll trust yourself and the more confident you'll feel in your abilities. Um, and you're gonna really surprise yourself that you can get so much more done in less time. And it will also stop you from over-researching. I really, really see that happening a lot. Okay, the next procrastination trap that I see is waiting for inspiration. Ah, oh, I can't possibly do my business work because I'm not feeling inspired. Or I, I, can't, I can't possibly write my blog post because I just don't feel like it right now. Or maybe I'll feel like it tomorrow. <laughs> or maybe if I light this candle or play this music or eat some chocolate, maybe then I'll feel like doing my work. If you wait around, for inspiration, you will be waiting forever. And it really kind of is frustrating because I see so many people um, and so many of my clients have really, really wonderful ideas, like these wonderful businesses that they want to create, these like really powerful solutions that they want to get out into the world. Or they've got hundreds or dozens of ideas for blog posts and videos, but they just don't put it out there because they're just not feeling inspired. It's just not, they just don't feel like it right now. It's that inertia that if you let yourself be lazy, <laughs> if you let yourself wait for inspiration, that's always going to be your default. You're just going to keep waiting. Instead, in Startup in 60, what we do, instead of waiting for inspiration, we schedule our work time. So you're going to have in your schedule specific times to work every day, whether it's for 60 minutes or whether it's for 60 seconds. And that's it, that's your work time. So during those 60 minutes or during those 60 seconds, that's all you're thinking about. You are just working. And it doesn't matter whether you feel like it or not. Here's the truth. You do plenty of things in your life without waiting for inspiration. 
you do plenty of things that are not high on your priority list without waiting for inspiration. You walk the dog when the dog needs to go out. You don't have to wait to feel like walking the dog because the dog's got to go out or else he'll mess your house. You feed your kids, not when you feel inspired to feed your kids. You feed your kids because it's time for them to eat and they need it now. You get up in the morning, not because you feel like getting up or you feel inspired to get up. You get up because if you don't go to your job, you're gonna get fired. So just think about all of those things you do every single day without waiting for inspiration. And a lot of those things are just kind of normal, mundane, everyday tasks, like getting food for your kids or walking the dog or going to work or brushing your teeth. You don't wait to feel inspired to brush your teeth, you just do it. So why not just do the things that are actually important to you, like starting a business? So do your website work, do your client work, do your warm letters, do your marketing, do your writing, but don't wait to feel inspired. So that's a huge procrastination trap, is waiting to be inspired. And the final procrastination trap that I wanna talk about is comparing yourself to other people. And we did talk about this just briefly, about how we see all these other people and we think they're doing so much better than us. And it makes us feel bad, so we kind of freeze up and not do anything at all. Like, oh, if I can't put a video out there with great animated transitions and a really cool soundtrack and all these different camera angles and great lighting and everything, well, then I shouldn't do a, a video at all. And that's really unfortunate because you have great information, you've got great solutions, you've got great products and services that people need. There are people who definitely need your services and you are, aren't serving them. You're actually causing a disservice if you don't get that information out to them, even if it's not perfect. If you go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> and you go back like six years or so, if you want a really good laugh, go to my YouTube channel and look at my videos from like six years ago. They are rough. They are super rough. <laughs> like they're blurry and they're, they're out of focus. I didn't know how to edit videos, so I was doing my videos in one really, really long take. So I'd have to memorize like a 10 minute script and then just speak the whole thing into the camera. My lighting is a little wonky and, and yeah, but I still did it. I still put my information out there and I still earned money despite not being perfect. So even now, I, I have to be imperfect and, and, and do the work even if I'm not as good as everyone else. So for example, today I was trying to link up uh, another system that I'm using where I put like a nice overlay on the video and it, it has like my, my, my website and a little graphic and all that stuff. It wasn't working. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to do this Facebook Live without my cute little graphics and stuff. So I'm putting this out there imperfectly. <laughs> so I want you to put your good work out there imperfectly. You can still be of service. You can still earn money, um, even if you're not as good as some of those fancier people. And honestly, there was always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be someone with more money, with flashier equipment, and cooler music, and cooler graphics, and a prettier website. There's always going to be that. So you might as well just do the best that you can right where you're at, and still be helpful to the people who need you. All right. Let's see. Can anyone, oh. Linda says, my writing professors insisted that I always write, whether or not I'm in the right mood. <laughs> yes, I think writers have to figure this out really fast because, uh, yeah, if you want to try to meet like your writing quotas for every day, or if you want to actually like finish a book, you've got to write whether or not you feel like it or not. It's just got to become a habit just like anything else. And even 60 seconds of writing every single day counts more than waiting weeks or months to feel inspired. So good point, Linda. Okay, so another question that I got about Startup in 60 is, can I start a business even if I have a day job, kids, or other responsibilities? <laughs> well, you haven't guessed by now, like, yes, yes, of course you can do it, no matter if you have other responsibilities. I think there's this misconception out there, and honestly, sometimes I perpetuate the misconception, and I'm sorry about that. 
But there's this misconception that if you want to have your own business, you've got to quit your day job. You can't be working any other job at all. You can't have a corporate job. You can't be working retail. You can't do anything else but your business. And that's really not, not true. I've found that the people who have the most successful businesses who work with me are the ones who still have a day job. And the reason is, is maybe their reason for starting a business is just to have extra money for their family to pay off debt or to go on vacations. And that's what they're using their business for. Their business isn't the be all end all amazingness goal of their whole life. It's just to help out their family. Or some people have their own business and it is their passion. That is what they want to be doing, but they keep their day job so that they can have that steady income while they're growing their business. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to put passion and excitement into your business while in the back of your mind, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to earn a thousand dollars this week. How am I going to do it? Like, you know, <laughs> I think you can realize like when you see people out there who their, their marketing feels really desperate and really kind of like, Ugh, like, you know, they're just kind of grabbing for money. Nobody wants to work with someone who's like that. That's just kind of icky. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. So don't be like that. You don't want to put that kind of strain, that financial strain into something you actually care about. So yes, if you still have a day job or if you have another career, it's not a day job, it's your actual career, keep it. Do not quit your day job. That is not my advice at all. It will help keep you a little bit more level-headed as you are growing your business. All right, so just wondering how many of you have already started your business and how many of you have another job in addition to the business that you have or are starting? So type into the comments, let me know, do you have another job or are you just working on your business solo? So type that into the comments. I would really love to hear how many of you are balancing business and another job or not. Um, things that are going to help you with that if you do have a day job. In Startup in 60, we talk about being imperfect. We talk about how you can still earn money even though you're not as polished as maybe everyone else. We talk about choosing your priorities and how to determine which priorities need your attention in your life, and uh, different kinds of schedules, including batch schedules and pacing schedules. And if you watched my video from earlier this week, um, how to turn your stress into success, I talk about uh, pacing schedules in there. All right, another question. So what are your best time management tips for busy women? Okay, so a lot of this is covered in Startup in 60, but I guess, uh, one thing I, I really like is, is called eating your frog. <laughs> so any of you have read uh, Brian Tracy's book, Eat That Frog? If you have, let me know in the comments what you think of it, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And um, what it's about is front loading your day. It's about taking your scariest, most complex uh, task and doing it first thing in the morning. You eat your frog, your frog, the nasty thing that you just got to get done. You do it in the morning. And the reason that you do that is so that if any other distractions come up in the afternoon or if you get tired or whatever, or you've got other things going on, at least you've already had a win for the day. At least you've already completed your most important task. So let's see some of these comments. Um, Linda says, that writers get paid after the work is done. So yes, I do have a day job and I'm working on finding a job that has more writing involved with it. Perfect. Um, that's, I think that's a really good tip. If you do have a day job or if you do have some other kind of career, is there a way that that can help you with your business? Um, so for me, I'm a for, I was a former book editor and so I have lots of editorial journalism experience too. Um, I was also captain of my speech team in high school, so I have a lot of public speaking experience, and all of that has helped me be a better coach. It's helped me write my content for my programs. It's helped me uh, get in front of videos like Facebook Live right now and, and be able to communicate with my followers. Um, so what types of things from your job are you learning, like what kind of interpersonal skills or um, how to be persuasive maybe? Yeah, so don't discount your day job or your other career. It can really help boost your business at the same time. Um, da, 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 da. Nicole says, I started a uh, working contract for myself, but want to start something passive downloadable too. 
but I'm unclear about what I want that passive thing to be. Ooh, this is so juicy. We have an entire week about passive income uh, products in Startup in 60. So for those of you who are real, real newbies, and you're not sure what we're talking about when we say passive, what does that mean? Um, your business, ideally, <clears throat> should have three types of income, and we set this up in Startup in 60. So active income is whatever you're selling, you are actively involved in the delivery of whatever it is. So it is really you there doing the thing. So if you are a personal trainer and you travel to your clients' houses and you help them do their, their, their runs and their sit-ups and their pull-ups and whatever, you're actively there coaching them, that's active income. Me, I'm a life coach. I do Skype calls kind of just like this. It's really me, it's not a robot, so that's active income. Let's say you're a jewelry designer and you design custom jewelry and you have to go back and forth with your clients about, do you like these gems? Do you like this material we're using? What about this shade? As you're designing your jewelry, that's active income. It's really you doing the thing. You are involved in the delivery of the product or service. So that's active income. For active income, it gets more of you personally so you can charge more. For passive income, that means the delivery of whatever it is is done passively. You're not really there at that time. You might create something once and then sell it thousands and thousands of times. This is also known as selling while you sleep. So maybe you'll create a digital PDF workbook that people can buy and download immediately without you having to be there, like hand delivering it to them. Um, or maybe you have a a 60 minute workshop on video that people can purchase and watch at any time they want. That's passive income. My Startup in 60 program is passive and active. So it's a passive income product, meaning that all of the videos, all of the worksheets, all of the information is sitting in the Life Editor Clubhouse right now. And you can go in there and go through the entire program on your own right now. <laughs> it's sitting there so someone could buy it go through it right now on their own. It's also an active income product because uh, every so often I do the live session, which we're starting on Monday, where we have interactive group calls with me. Um, so it can be both. So I, I'm sometimes involved with it and I'm sometimes not. So, so passive income is people can buy it and it's delivered to them without you being involved. So if you're asleep, <laughs> if you're on the other side of the planet, if you are on vacation, if you're sick or whatever, you can still be earning money. And then the final income is consistent income, otherwise known as subscriptions. And this is where you're getting installment payments in regular intervals over time. And it can be active or passive. So let's say you have like a coaching program it's three months long and they pay you on the first of the month every month for three months that's consistent income or let's say you have an of the month club like a sticker club <laughs> of the month and every month you deliver stickers and they pay you every month ongoing for whatever help indefinitely um, so you get that consistent income consistent income is great because it helps you plan your money most entrepreneurs, our income goes up and down and up and down and up and down. You never know how much money you're going to have month to month. But when you set up consistent income streams, you're able to plan. You can say like, oh, three months from now, I'll be able to pay off that debt. Or five months from now, I'll have enough money for vacation. Or six months from now, I can hire an assistant, whatever it is. Um, so active, passive, and consistent income. Active income is really you there doing the thing so you can charge more. Passive income you do it once and you sell it many times, so it costs a little bit less, but you don't have to be there doing it. And then consistent income helps you plan your money so you don't have those highs and lows as an entrepreneur. Make sense? So yeah, in Startup in 60, we help you create and design your active, passive, and consistent income. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you guys getting worried about how much we're cramming into 60 days? You can do it, you can totally do it. <laughs> Um, okay, other things. Um, another time management tip, which is kind of the entire point of Startup in 60, is to act quickly. If you have an idea, if you have a hunch, if you have this feeling 
of, oh, you know, maybe I should send that email or, you know, it'd be really great if I put that picture on social media or, hey, maybe I should tell my uh, email subscribers about such and such. Whatever it is, act quickly, act on it and do it. Don't just like put it on your to-do list and don't look at it for 10 months or don't just keep it floating in the back of your head so you forget about it. There's a great book by Mel Robbins called The Five Second Rule where she counts down five, four, three, two, one, go, whenever there is something that she knows she needs to take action on. Anything from waking up in the morning to sending emails to making phone calls to whatever it is, just five, four, three, two, one, go. So she doesn't give herself time to research or procrastinate or overthink it or forget about it. If you have that nudge, if you have that instinct, do it. Just go right to it. Um, that's what we do in Startup in 60. If you've got 60 seconds to make a decision and move forward, or else you're going to be behind, you will do it. You will act quickly, and you'll train yourself to continue to act quickly in the future. All right, so those are some common questions I've been getting about Startup in 60. But let's talk about what's actually in the Startup in 60 program. So it's nine weeks long, so slightly longer than um, 60 days. And let me just go through really quickly the topics for each week. So week one is revolutionize your time. Like I said, this is a time management course. Yes, it's for business owners, but it's a time management course. And we start off with getting you really clear about your time right from the beginning. Because if you don't have time, like blocked out in your schedule, then, then it's not going to work. Then you're not going to be able to start a business. Um, so we help you bust through your excuses. We help you look at your time log. We help you find those lost minutes. We help you pinpoint the distractions so that you can make time every single day to inch forward on your business. Ideally, we try to block off an hour a day. I know that doesn't happen <laughs> for everyone. Um, so that's why you get the choice, 60 minutes for 60 seconds every day. You've got two different choices every day to make. So some days you might be able to do the 60 minute task. And then some days you have to just be okay with doing the 60 second one. It still counts. Week two is define your business and your ideal clients. So yeah, we're not even talking about your business and what you want to do as a business until week two. We spend a whole week getting clear on your time and then we talk about your business. And for some of you, it might be a really vague idea still. It might just be, super nebulous, like, I just want to help people, or I want to do something with my hands, or, you know, I'm really good at X, Y, and Z, how can I do something with that to earn money? And that's okay. It's totally okay if you don't have a really clearly defined business yet, because we get to that in week two. We talk about why you're starting your business, the assets that you have to bring into your business, your values, your um, experiences, your personality. And then we talk about your ideal clients. Here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that you get to choose your clients. Yes, you choose your clients, not the other way around. Um, so we're gonna get clear about who you want to work with, who you want to serve. If you're thinking to yourself like, oh, I've got this, this thing I wanna do and this such and such person will buy it, but ugh, it, I don't like working with those type of people, but they're the ones who will buy it. No, 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 no. We're going to figure something else out. We're going to have you working with the people that you actually want to work with, people who value your time and value your efforts um, and will pay you accordingly. Week three is setting up your online headquarters. That's your website. And I like calling it an online headquarters because it's so much more than just your website. It's going to have your blog. It's going to have your about page, your contact page, your products and services. Um, it's going to link up to your payment processor. It's going to have opt-in boxes so that you can grow your email subscriber list. So yeah, it really is your online headquarters. Maybe like 20 years ago or 15 years ago, you would need like a shop, like a storefront um, in the shopping center <laughs> in your local town. And that's where you would set up a business. But it's not true anymore. You can have an online business and we're going to help you set up your website from scratch that you have this like glorious little <laughs> pocket of sunshine on the internet where your ideal clients can find you. Week four is creating your packages, products, and your pricing. 
So we kind of talked about that a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about the differences between products, which are kind of one-off um, items, versus your packages, which have extended payments, and there's more of a relationship with your clients. And then we're going to talk about how to choose the right prices for your products and services, which I can know can be a little tricky. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make it <laughs> very, very easy for you. Um, and uh, explain to you how you can foolproof uh, your prices so that you know exactly when to raise them and when they feel right for your specific clients. Week five is reaching out to your most likely buyers. So that's definitely your secret weapon. Uh, we're gonna do warm letter campaigns and referral marketing um, because I think it's really important to get some sales quickly so that you have added confidence and you start feeling good about what you're putting out there. Week six is blogging like a badass. And I sent an email earlier this week about how I'm not a blogger. I'm a business owner who uses my blog to market my business. I'm gonna show you how to position yourself on your blog as an expert. So whatever your business is, if you're like a health coach, or if you uh, make crafts, or if you are a productivity coach, or um, trying to think of what else, if you sell stuff on Etsy, um, if you are a home interior designer, um, if you're a writer, if you're whatever it is that you're doing, you should have blog posts that position you as an expert and show your ideal clients that you have really good solutions. So when they read your blog posts or they see your videos or they listen to your podcast, they're going to say like, wow, if this is her free stuff, imagine what her paid stuff is like. Imagine like all the information I would get from her paid stuff. So we're going to talk all about blogging in week six. Week seven is market like you mean it. Yeah, that's the thing. You could have the best products and the best solutions, but if you're not getting your business out in front of the people who could benefit from it, then you're not going to get sales. And that's really frustrating. So I'm going to show you how you can market your business and get in front of the people who really, really need you. Um, yeah, because we, we want people to find your business. We, we don't want you to be lost on the internet. We want you to be the first thing that people think of when they need your solutions. Week eight is establishing, uh, establishing systems. Yeah, so we're going to talk about these repeatable processes, like having an operations manual um, or writing down the steps for things that you do over and over again. Like what are all the steps for a blog post? What are all the steps for sending an email? Um, we're going to talk about automation, so you can like pre-schedule your social media posts, so you can pre-schedule your blog posts, so you can pre-schedule your emails, because I think one of the worst things is people uh, getting behind in their business because they think they have to do everything live, like they have to sit there and do it the day that it's due, or they have to be on Facebook all day long posting stuff, no, 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 you, we're going to have you schedule things, which will again open up more of your time for other things. And then finally, week nine, the last week, is balance your business and your life. So it's talking about, well, where do you go after the 60 days? How do you keep your business functioning and running and growing without losing any time and ideally gaining more time back? Because that's the thing. Once your business starts rolling and you start earning more money, you're going to be able to find other solutions that can save you more time. Like as your business starts rolling, you can get more automation systems, or maybe you can hire an assistant, or maybe you can outsource some things. So you can continue to grow, you continue to earn more money, and you get more free time back. So I think that's really what's powerful about starting your own business is that it actually enhances your life. Like once you get it set up, you're going to have more money to do all of those other things that you want to do. You're going to be able to spend more time with your family. You're going to be able to save for vacations. You're going to be able to have this like confidence and feel capable of starting from something from scratch. You're going to have these accountability partners and other friends who grew their businesses right alongside you. So I think that's what's really amazing about Startup in 60 is that um, it's a lot easier to start a business than you think. And the benefits go far beyond simply, I have a business now. All right, also, we'll, uh, just really quickly, the results that you can expect from Startup in 60. Um, like I said, you're going to have your online headquarters. Uh, you can gain financial freedom. You're finally going to be able to price your products and services properly. 
um, creating good habits so that you're inching forward every day and making progress, even if you only have 60 seconds a day, um, streamlined routines, more personal time, um, noticing your progress daily, accountability partners, more self-control, and more confidence. And <laughs> even more specifically, what you get, and if you go to uh, sagegrayson.com slash startup in 60, and the link is somewhere in the comments here, um, click on that link and you'll see all the little ins and outs and the things that you get. You get 12 video lessons, 29 <laughs> worksheets, you get nine group calls. That's what I was talking about, about this being a live session where there's interactive group calls with me. So if you have a very, very specific question for your specific business, you get it answered on the group calls. You can also email me during the program, sage at sagebrayson.com, and I can answer your very specific questions for your business. Um, you get the Facebook group <laughs> where you can interact with other um, entrepreneurs and find some accountability partners. You get more than 12 hours of previous call recordings from other live sessions, so you can hear other examples of people starting their businesses and the solutions that I was able to provide them. Um, you get accountability, you get dozens of recommended books and resources, and probably best of all, you get a silver level annual subscription to the Life Editor Clubhouse. So the Life Editor Clubhouse is my membership site where all of my products, programs, and video courses live. So Startup in 60 is actually in the Life Editor Clubhouse. It's one of the, the many programs and classes that are in there. So you can do the entire Startup in 69 week program, and then you can venture off and do other things in the clubhouse too. Uh, there's a procrastination class, there's a resistance class, there's an email marketing class. There's also my five-week program, Life Editing for Beginners. So if you are really new to life editing, jump in there and take that five-week program too. Um, so it's a really, really good deal. Again, Startup in 60, the live session begins this Monday, February 4th, and it's $149 US dollars. So the link is somewhere here <laughs> in the comment box. Um, if you have any questions about Startup in 60 or your personal business or um, anything about what we cover in the program or anything about starting a business or time management or any questions about the course, leave your questions in the comments here or you can email me at sage at sagegrayson.com and I would be happy to answer your questions. Speaking of questions, I had one question that was emailed to me um, before this call, so I want to make sure that I answer that. So Amy wrote in and Amy said, um, after 19 years in Ohio, I moved to Maryland and started a new and very demanding job that sometimes includes 14 hour days. Yikes. I'm emotionally and physically drained by the time I get home. How do I focus on my goals when all I want to do is curl up and take a nap? Whoa, thank you so much for writing in Amy. First of all, Amy, this question is like the epitome of what people are, are experiencing as they're going through Startup in 60. Like you are the exact person <laughs> that should be taking Startup in 60. Because like I said, every day you get a 60 minute task or a 60 second task. And if you have 14 hour days at work, you're doing the 60 second task. Because you gotta get really, really honest with yourself. Can you do 60 seconds of work to move your business forward every day? Yes. If you have time to go to the bathroom, you have time to work on your business. I know that's a little crude, but like seriously, you have time to, to eat. If you have time to go to the bathroom, you, you 100% have time to work on your business if it only takes one minute per day. So Amy, here are my suggestions for you because you do have such demanding, long work days, how do you grow your business at the same time? Okay, my first um, tip is to choose your priorities. And this is one of the first things that we do in Startup in 60. When you're starting a business, sometimes you have to accept that there's going to be seasons of your life where some things are getting done and some other things are not getting done. You can do it all in your life, but you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to be a rock star at your job and start a business and like bake cookies for your kid's school and be like the mom on the field trip and plan your sister's wedding and do all of these other things and remodel your home, like all at the same time. 
You can do it all, but you don't have to do it all at once. So if starting a business is important to you, I would say cut back on some of the other priorities and wait on those until later when um, your, your things slow down at work or when your business is more established. So let's say in this season of your life for the next 60 days, you're gonna focus on your, your day job, which is very important, and focus on your business. And then other things will have to take a back seat. It doesn't mean you completely neglect your kids or neglect your spouse or neglect your health, but that means those things are not going to be as high a priority as starting your business and doing well at work. So that might mean like for your health, um, maybe you're not cooking really elaborate meals. Maybe you're just having very simple salads and pastas or sandwiches or whatever. You're not like standing in the kitchen cooking for hours. Everything is very simple. Um, for your kids, maybe you have to ask your spouse to help out or maybe you need to get a babysitter. Um, for like other things, like for your spouse, maybe you cut back on date nights or do date nights at home where you don't have to go out and, and lose some of your time. Does this make sense? Like, so your first tip is to choose your priorities and accept that there are seasons of your life and determine what actually needs your attention now. So it's probably just your work and your new business. Tip number two is to find the pockets of time. Like I said, if you have time to pee, you have time to work on your business. So um, Amy, can you find 60 seconds in your day? That might mean in the morning, uh, sitting at your desk and doing your next startup in 60 task before you go to work, even if it's like five in the morning. Um, or that might mean uh, going out to your car during your lunch break and doing your next startup in 60 task there so at least you can get away and do something even though you are in the middle of your 14 hour work day. Or maybe um, you have to wait until the weekend, even though you're tired, even though you're exhausted, maybe you could combine all of those 60 second tasks and then do them in one lump on the weekends, like on Saturday mornings. And we talk about the different kinds of schedules based on your priorities in um, startup in 60. So some of you are going to have a pacing schedule where you touch all of your goals, all of your tasks every single day, but maybe only for a minute or two. And some of you are going to have batch schedules where you don't do anything all week long. And then on one day you get everything done. Like you work for two or three hours or whatever. So I think that might have to be what you're doing, Amy. If you just want to say, you know, Monday through Friday is my job. And then the weekend I'm going to do time for my business and just block off the time like that. My third tip is to go for those smaller wins. Always, always go for the smaller wins. Um, so that means it, as you're going through the Startup in 60 materials, you're gonna learn how to just be okay with um, how things are instead of wishing that you had a million dollars to do something super fancy. So no uh, spectacular fancy logo. No spending hours analyzing the best colors for your website. Um, no spending hours going over your, your photos um, or finding the best WordPress theme or whatever. <laughs> You're just going to go for the smaller wins and say, this is good enough for now. Um, what's good enough without having to be perfect because you can still earn money even when things are not perfect. It's kind of like the the motto of us life editors is done is better than perfect. Done is always, always better than perfect. So we're going to focus on just getting things done. And if after Startup in 60, you want to go back and revisit some of the modules and go more in depth and really do come up with this most amazing fancy logo, by all means do that. But at least get to the point where you've got your product services and you're earning some money before you go back and do version two or version three of the different modules. And then my fourth and final tip for you, Amy, is to boost your self-care. Holy moly, if you are doing 14 hour days at work, you 100% need to balance that with self-care because all day long you are draining your energy, uh, doing your work, and you need something to fill your cup again, to fill you up again, to give you that energy back. Um, so we've talked about this like many, many times in my videos about the difference between self-care and self-comfort. Self-care, 
gives you energy and lifts you up. Self-comfort numbs you out. So uh, for your self-care, I don't want you to like <laughs> get a pizza and sit on the couch and watch Netflix for five hours, although maybe some days you do need to do that. Think about what types of things give you energy. So maybe that's going for a walk with your kids, or maybe that's having a really honest conversation with your best friend, or maybe that's um, having people over for game night, or maybe that's taking a bubble bath, and maybe that's reading a really good book, or watching your favorite movie. So Amy, you think about what things uh, are your self-care, and then really, really boost your self-care over this next season of life where it seems like your job is pretty demanding, uh, fulfilling but demanding. One of the things that I think could help you with your self-care is Startup in 60 because when you're in Startup in 60, you're going to have these accountability partners. You're going to have other life editors who can be your buddies <laughs> and really support you while you're growing your business. And I think it's really important to talk to other women who are ambitious and who are going after their goals and who have really full uh, lives with lots of responsibilities. It gives you more confidence that you can do this too. Um, also with Startup in 60, you get lifetime access. So if you join and you do really great for three weeks and then all of a sudden you have to go out of the country for work or whatever it is, it's okay. You can always come back to Startup in 60 and go through the modules again. We won't always have a live session with group calls, but you can listen to the old call recordings and you can go through the videos and the worksheets when it's appropriate for you. Um, so yes, I do encourage you to go through the program in 60 days, but if you do need to take a break and come back to it, it's there. It's always going to be there waiting for you. Okay, Amy, I hope that answered your question about how you can still grow your business despite having 14 hour work days. Um, if any of you have questions about Startup in 60 or time management or anything else uh, that's on your mind, be sure to type it into the comments box. Let me see what we got going on here. Uh, oh, Joe L says, what is the schedule exactly? Um, <laughs> Linda says, get it done. Yeah. Okay, so Joe L, um, we start Monday, February 4th. And what happens with Startup in 60 when you join? Uh, you'll get your username and password so you can log into the clubhouse right away. Um, as soon as you log into the clubhouse and you click on Startup in 60, it's under business classes. Um, all of the content is there right now. The videos, the modules, uh, the worksheets, the resources, the call recordings from previous versions, it's all there. So if you wanted to, I mean, it's up to you. If you wanted to, you can hop into the clubhouse today and go through the entire Startup in 60 program this weekend on your own, if, if you felt like that. Or you can wait for our live session, which starts on Monday. So you join, you'll get access to Startup in 60, and on Monday morning, every morning, every Monday morning, bright and early, you'll get an email from me saying, hey, it's week one of Startup in 60. Here's the videos for you to watch. Here's your worksheets to do. Remember to jump into the Facebook group and answer these questions and share with us, and then I'll have links to the resources for you. Um, other books and videos to help you go to the next level. And um, a lot of people in the Facebook group like to share their worksheets or ask questions about the videos. And then every Thursday at noon Eastern time, you get a group call with me based on the topic of whatever it is that week. So the week one is all about excuses. So next week we're going to be talking about our excuses, shifting our mindsets, and kind of getting into the, the right frame of mind to start our businesses. So that's next week. So the entire program is nine weeks long. So every Monday for nine weeks, you're gonna get an email from me with the next steps for you to do and your homework. Every Thursday for nine weeks, you're gonna get a group call with me where you can speak to me directly and ask questions. And when you're in the clubhouse every week, you get uh, videos for that week, worksheets for that week, recommended resources, um, and then prompts to answer in the Facebook group for, e for each week, for each topic. <laughs> if you click the link that's here in the comments somewhere, you can see the exact schedule for Startup in 60, including each of the modules for each week. So like next week is all about excuses, and then there's five different separate modules um, and separate homework for each excuse. Also, in um, on on the sales page, uh, which is safegrayson.com slash startup in 60, 
there is a preview video, um, which is actually from one of the first modules. And there's actually templates from one of the other modules about how to get testimonials for your business. So you actually get um, to preview <laughs> some of the, the content before you join. So Joelle, I hope that answered your question about what the schedule is. All right, let's see. I don't see any other questions coming in, but if you're watching this recording later, go ahead and type your questions into the comment box. I'll be coming back all week to answer your questions or send an email to sage at sagegrayson.com if you have any questions at all about Startup in 60. I just have to say, I am really, really proud of the content that I put into Startup in 60. I feel like it's, it's incredibly helpful to be able to help people reach their goal of starting a business, but do it quicker and with less stress than they thought possible. I mentioned this before that starting a business is my client's most common New Year's resolution. Um, and like I said, I'm a life editor, I'm a life coach, though I, I do work with women who are creatively driven by work. So whether they have a day job or they have their own businesses or both, they're, they're putting something out into the world. So it makes sense that a lot of them want to start businesses. And I think it was kind of breaking my heart for a while to see so many women who wanted to start businesses but couldn't get a handle on their time. And they couldn't figure out how they could implement the stuff that they know they need to be doing when they always felt like they were stretched too thin. So that's what I really hope Startup in 60 can do for you, that it can empower you to make quicker decisions, to move forward and get it done, as we say, done is better than perfect and um, really increase your confidence and show you that you can do this. You are capable, like you are a smart, talented life editor and you can put something beautiful out into the world and lift people up through your business. And I would be absolutely honored to be your coach and help you do it. All right, so this has been an Ask Me Anything call for Startup in 60. Again, our live session begins February 4th, which is next Monday. Um, so uh, click the link here in the description to go to the sales page and read all the details about the program for every week of the program um, Watch some preview videos download some preview worksheets uh, read some testimonials and uh, frequently asked questions Again, if you have any questions send an email to sage at sagegrayson.com All right future entrepreneurs. I can't wait to start working with you next week um, I really am excited to see what kind of businesses you create. All right. Thanks for being here on the call. I will talk to you real soon.